Uh, okay. Uh, can we get the agenda? Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Uh, um, so, on the agenda today, we've got uh, our usual Hackfest update, but we don't have an update. It's still pending. Um, <laughs> Uh, the training working group proposal from Tracy um, that had a little bit of conversation on the mailing list between she and I. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on that, but maybe Tracy, we can just sort of review that and, and have a discussion. Um, uh, then uh, we've got Hyperledger Quilt, which is the uh, interledger protocol proposal. Um, and I saw Adrian on, I think, yeah. Um, and so I think we're ready for a vote on that because I know it's been a few weeks since it was, um, you know, discussed a, a couple of times, and there was discussion on the mailing list. But I haven't seen any uh, in the past week, so I think we're probably ready to to uh, approve that one. And uh, Hyperledger chain code designer proposal, we will defer because Bay is not on the call, not able to join us today. And, um, and then uh, we will uh, just a, a brief update from Tracy on the project reporting and some lucky person like me gets to go first next week. Any other, um, any other items for the agenda today? Okay, hearing none, I think Tracy, take it off with the uh, training proposal. Sure. So, as we talked about in the at the Chicago Hackfest, uh, we decided that a training working group was something that we wanted to kick off and form uh, to capture things like uh, educational material and presentations and, and things that people could actually use to uh, you know, do training courses for the different Hyperledger projects. Um, so with that, I put to the, the mailing list a uh, proposed charter. Um, as Chris said, uh, a couple of comments have come out that we should probably discuss here as a larger group. And then uh, really this is uh, the scope of this was really just to uh, make sure that we're developing training material for both technical and non-technical audiences uh, for the projects that exist in the Hyperledger umbrella. And then um, basically, you know, as we need it, the, the working group could form uh, small task forces to really go, to go through and complete training materials for uh, a particular topic or, or topics as they, they deem fit. Um, so the, the work products would include, this is my initial list, so obviously uh, not limited to this, but presentation, uh, graphics, both still in motion type graphics, webinars, videos, self-paced training, instructor-led training, um, which would include both presentation and labs. And then, of course, the, the working group would work with other uh, working groups, the TSC uh, project maintainers, to make sure that they're identifying any training needs that exist out there. Um, also making sure that they're working with the Hyperledger brand and marketing teams to ensure that what we're developing meets the brand and trademark guidelines. Um, and so then really just the, the process was just what you would expect from any working group, making sure that we have an open emailing list, email list, a rocket chat channel, wiki page, um, holding meetings on a bi-weekly sort of basis, and uh, as needed for the, the task forces to do the, the individual work that needs to be done. Um, and then, of course, the what we'd be creating out of this is something that we would want to store in a GitHub repository. Um, so licensed, obviously, to meet the requirements of our charter. And um, then we would have some maintainers that we would have to decide who those maintainers would be and uh, making sure that they're reviewed and approved by a minimum of two maintainers before we commit anything to the repository. Uh, again, I think this is another area we want to talk about. Um, and then, you know, all of this is uh, pretty much what you would expect the rest of it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what we have. So open for discussion. 
Thanks, Tracy. So yeah, yeah I, I had um, sort of sent the first comment, and that was really re re regarding the scope and suggesting that maybe we want to limit the scope to be um, active projects, projects that have graduated from incubation. And you push back a bit on that, saying we don't want to discourage work. And I, I think I agree with that. But by the same token, um, you know, I, I think we do, you know, we, we have the incubation process there for a reason, right? And, um, and, and so, you know, again, I think it's, I don't, I don't think anybody wants to discourage people from creating training material for their, for their project. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying if the, if there's going to be a working group that's focused on helping to coordinate and develop material that, um, uh, you know, for the organization as a whole and for the various projects that we should, um, scope that work such that it's, um, manageable and that, you know, one of the ways of achieving that is to um, limit it to active uh, projects because they've already demonstrated a certain degree of, um, uh, you know, that they have, they've, they've established a community of contributors uh, beyond the initial um, individual or company that contributed the, you know, the project in the first place. Um, and, you know, they've met various other criteria for sustainability of the project. And if we're going to invest in that, it seems, in, invest in training, I should say, it seems to me that we should invest in those projects that have already established that, you know, that sort of, that sort of level of sustainability. So I don't know what others think. Um, again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, um... Chris, uh, this is Vipin. Um, given that the working group will be uh, on a purely voluntary basis, I mean, in, in terms of investing resources, uh, people will invest resources in what they believe in, right? So if uh, there is a bunch of people who want to create training material for something that is in, uh, uh, in, incubation they should be free to do that it's my opinion because well i mean uh you, yeah, you would guide them I, but, but, that, that but is what I, that's what i said but not in the context of the working group again the working group is you know this is again you know when, when you're when you're working on a project and you want to help people understand how to use that project you put together training sample apps documentation and so forth. That's just, that's part of what you do, right? What we're talking about here is going a little bit above and beyond that. And I, again, I, I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm just saying that if we're going to get others to come in and work on these things, that there should be a threshold. That, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you can't do those things. I'm just saying. So you're saying that you can do it, but not in in the context of the working group. Is is that is that what you're saying? That's sort of I mean, what I'm I, saying. I don't know exactly what you're saying. If if somebody is uh, saying I want to work on creating training material for Borough or Indy, which are still in incubation, I take it, uh, then I shouldn't be prevented from doing that, right? I mean, in, even in the context of the working group, if I, if I if that's where I put to choose to put my resources. Uh, in terms of what I am doing. So my thing is, okay, yeah, uh, I'm sure that the projects that are out of incubation will attract, uh, which are active, will attract a lot more, um, you know, people doing this uh, than the ones that, but I don't think we should just gate it in such a way that we should prevent these people from doing it. Is it a question of resources from the Linux Foundation involved in this? Um, it, 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 it's it's not just the Linux Foundation, although there's there's that aspect of it. But I think it's also a function of if there are people that are engaged in this working group that um, uh, you know are, are are working on these things. That I think that there's a certain amount of, if you will, peer pressure to work on the things that the working group is working on. 
And so again, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, and I'm, I'm not picking anything out. I'm just saying, you know, if, if, you know, all, all of a sudden everybody's working on it and let me just sort of pick something that's sort of uh, maybe not getting as much attention and just say, let's say the fabric SDK, Python uh, SDK. Uh, why would we spend a lot of energy on that if there's not really enough energy to keep that project going? Well, I think the working groups to figure that out on their own. Um, well, but that was also not clear to me is how does the working group decide what they're going to work on, right? So, uh, I mean, maybe maybe I'm being a little bit over. Well, Chris, I, think you, bit. I think you're coming back to the right question, Chris, which is how does the working group prioritize the projects that are worked on? And right. Can we just leave it at that level and not try to make the discrimination? So. Tracy, how how will you decide the first set of things you work on in the working group? So, I mean, I think it comes down to who wants to be involved, right? I think it, it really is where is the passion um, as well as, like, where is the need? Um, obviously, we have need for particular training I see in, in different areas, um, you know, for the different projects. I I have been at hackathons where people have wanted to use Indie, but couldn't necessarily get themselves started because they didn't know where to start, right? I think that's a big need that people have because identity is a huge space. Um, so, you know, if there are people who have the knowledge of Indie, I would not want to stop them from creating material for that. Um, now, do we prior prioritize that over something else? I don't know that I can say yes or no, because if there's nobody who comes in with a passion for one of the other projects um, that is active, why would I force them to try and create that? Because it's not going to happen. I, I really feel like it's a, a, you know, volunteer nature that, that Vipin was talking about, right? And who those volunteers are really going to help decide kind of where um, some of this goes. Another way of thinking of it maybe is, you know, what we should be trying to do both at the kind of the TSC level when I think about what I have Tracy and my the rest of my staff, this is Brian, by the way, sorry, um, the, re the rest of us do is make sure that, you know, we, we amplify the duocracy, right? <laughs> when people do show up to spend an hour contributing to something, that it becomes the most productive hour possible. Uh, and and that you know in the context of training, training materials really benefit from having people who know how to create how to create training materials. They're very different from documentation or source code. Um, uh, and and having a kind of some degree of harmonization across the training materials across the rest of the project would also be beneficial to people climbing the learning curve and understanding how these different projects differ and how they relate. So I think the role of the training project is training working group is not to decide how, decide how to allocate hours against different projects, but really when they do show up, how do we get the most out of them and, and make it beneficial to the widest audience. I, I, I sort of am taking a different view of this, if you will. Um, I, I see a need for a training working group to help get tools in place and stuff, but could almost envision that a year down the road, having training material would be one of the criteria to go from incubation to active, sort of like documentation. And, and I don't know, just my weird New Hampshire view. So I, I I would like some clarification on one thing, which is, is this the same thing or is that going to basically encompass the education uh, material development effort that was announced a while ago where Robert was hired to work on this? Or are these yes, going to be two different efforts? It's, no, it's intended to be the same effort. Oh, we we kind of are okay. bootstrapping it with Robert's efforts, and um, but but ultimately we view this group as kind of continuing the evolution of that content, and and we may still continue to uh, spend some money here um, to help bootstrap, you know, especially in projects that are younger. Um, if we feel that it's 
we have to, I mean, that's a Linux foundation and my staff, you know, we have to <laughs> be nice and be wary of being accused of playing favorites, that sort of thing. But uh, um, uh, yeah, that this is, in my view, the working group is the one that's kind of helping make sure that we keep the community uh, engaged in that process and, and really ultimately leading the, the standard setting for what gets developed. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so I guess that wasn't clear in the proposal. I didn't realize that this was picking up the MOOC and furthering it. Is that what it's doing? I think that's part of what it's doing, right? I, I think um, any training material that come out, comes out of this is uh, fair game to go into a MOOC, right? Um, I, I think that the existing MOOC, right, as we want to um, make changes to that, definitely would be part of this training group. So, I'm, but I don't, I don't think it's just stop it, uh, right? Sorry, Dan. Yeah, sorry. I was, I was just curious uh, what, and I think people have probably thought about this, but what's What's the, the benefit of, of orchestrating this through a separate working group as opposed to having each mature project uh, take on some task about training that's, that's maybe facilitated by people that have the skill sets to produce training material? It, just, it seems to me that, that the, the, each project understands its domain specifics in greater detail than sort of something that would sit in the middle of all the projects. Right, and, and Dan, that gets to the second point that I had in my note, which was uh, sort of review and approval of the content um, and organizing in the way that you sort of described, where it's really a function of the, the project to develop material and it's facilitated and augmented by um, either, you know, trained staff that are, you know, familiar with this domain of preparing training materials and so forth and augmented with videos and other things that, um, you know, that that, that uh, organization can provide um, that, you know, maybe that's facilitated by the working group and the working group is, I, I, again, I, I'm just, I, I'm still struggling a little bit with, if we put all this in one repository, how do you manage that? What content is, you know, is, is uh, approved, what part is still a work in progress, those kinds of things, I think, you know, sort of fall out of this. And, and to your point, if it's a function of the work product of a, uh, uh, you know, a sawtooth or a fabric or a cello or what have you, um, then it's a little bit easier to sort of align with the release and do all those other things that I think are going to be necessary. Yeah, I don't think the project hierarchy is intended to exclude or, or try to separate um, these teams. I think, you know, we could have a training working group basically meet and decide how they want to set up their, their repo structure because you could have separate repos. You likely would have separate repos per training module, and some modules are cross hyperledger, others are um, specific to deep, deep dives into the different projects. Uh, but I certainly. Hope this isn't you know seen as like keeping keeping sawtooth maintainers away from from this code and hopefully it's highly integrated. One second. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I think your your child has a little bit uh, of a voice in this. <laughs> Almost as much as your dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most cogent voice is here. <laughs> okay. Uh, this this is Bahua. Uh, Tracy, I I had some comments on the proposal, and uh, uh, one question is in, in the proposal you uh, you describe in uh, the scope is to prepare the uh, education materials. And uh, I want to know uh, if the training working group will uh, also have hold those uh, education events like uh, training lessons or a seminar or courses. Uh, so I hadn't I hadn't necessarily thought about that. Um, 
I don't know the answer to that. I, I think it uh, it probably depends on who the people are, right? As to whether or not they would want to to hold training events. Um, not sure about that one. Okay. What do you think? One thing. I, one thing I'll mention is that we see we're starting to see a lot of companies starting to provide training. Uh, around uh, fabric um, and and I pre hopefully presumably on other platforms and we think that's great uh, that's not something the Linux Foundation wants to exclusively do by any means um, uh, and what we'd love to see are, is that the content that drives those training sessions uh, be built kind of like the way source code is right that we're combining efforts uh, and allowing people to create derivative works but but encouraging them to to contribute back upstream when possible, so we hope this forms the basis for other 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 training programs and companies to to profitably deliver training services. Uh, Brian, uh, this is Oleg. Yes, um, I agree. With um, <clears throat> we've been running uh, sessions, uh, three-day uh, technical uh, deep dives on uh, Hyperledger Fabric. I've done six sessions already, and I'll be happy to uh, share the slide deck and any material. That we've uh, that we've perfected um, over those sessions. So I think it's a it's a great idea, and I'll be happy to uh, share anything that we have so far. Well, I very much see a need for assistance in in producing training materials. I, I still don't know if I've been able to wrap my head around the having a work group as as the main mechanism to do that. Uh, no, I can just uh, just to speak out loud, just, just thinking out loud. I think when I worked on very big projects, uh, I don't know, let's say in Cisco, right? So we had like the crypto team, we had the UI team, we had the interoperability team, and all that. But then there was a documentation team, you know, that was separate. The problem was, or it's always the case, right, that the documentation team should work very closely from the development team, unless you have like very good developers that, that are good at in documenting. I think, I think in a way it's a different skill, right? So I'm not sure kind of, we need to be able to open up to people that will be probably, I don't know, speak better, write better, diagram better, but at the same time, the, the project should have some control over the content or, or promises that people are making in the documentation, keep them up to date. So yeah, Dan, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I'm just saying that sometimes it's it's gonna be different people that, that should document, I think, than the hardcore developers. But the, the only risk is that we don't want them to be completely detached, right? So yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it helps, but <laughs> yeah. I think you're right, Jonathan. I think that, you know, the developers are, are very focused on what they're doing and trying to get the, the projects um, to the point where they want them to be right. And yeah. um, people who write documentation or do training, um, that takes a very special uh, person, right, to, to really make sure that they're thinking about how to make this simple for somebody else to learn from. And, um, you know, so I, I mean, I, I do see that they're, could be some overlap, but uh, that there's also a, a separate set of people who will um, want to be involved in creating material for for people to learn from. So, <laughs> I guess I'm I'm still struggling here a little bit. Um, because what I, mean, I, I think that there's a certain amount of <clears throat> um, you know, shall we say, just sort of general education, what's a blockchain, what's a block, what is consensus, that sort of thing. That is um, you know, that, that transcends any one project. Um, uh, then I think that, you know, to Jonathan's point, to Dan's point, you know, it's really the domain experts from the projects that have the, the deep knowledge and understanding that should 
significantly influence the um, the the training material. Um, but they, you know, uh, you know, as Jonathan outlined, they often don't necessarily have the skill set in producing, you know, effective training material. Right? That's yeah. that's yeah. a special that's a special skill in and of its own self. Um, but <clears throat> Um, you know, the documentation, people can't do the documentation without talking with an expert or at least having some raw material they can clean up and, and make, you know, do a better job of presenting to the intended audience and so forth. But um, I, you know, again, I, th I think we need a little bit more clarity about, you know, how we prioritize. I think we need a little bit more clarity about the fact that this is in conjunction with the, um, you know, the, uh, and Brian, I mean, help me understand how this works. I don't know if this is, do we pay the, is this a Linux Foundation uh, effort that, or is it a- Look at, the, the, sorry, I'd say, um, Put aside the fact that there may be people that we decide to pay to help create content. Um, think of this working group. I mean, if it's easier to think of it like it's a software project, it's just that the code that they create are assets for the MOOC or for training materials. Um, if it's easier to think of it like a project, then think of it that way. We thought working group is slightly easier. But really, think of that as a group just trying to help all the projects uh, create you know kind of unified training content and actually to also create that over overview you know blockchain 101 kind of content that is in what what you'll see come out towards the end of this month um, I, I but you know do try to put aside the fact that um, you, you know we will possibly spend more money I say possibly we haven't decided yet or how but almost certainly spend more money um, from the Hyperledger budget to help bootstrap additional content. Um, uh, some of it perhaps project specific and we'll have to come up with a process to be seen as being fair in which we do. But leave that to the side. No matter where those resources show up, um, this is the group that should help make sure that there's a consistency to that, those materials. Um, and, and it's actually kind of, you know, performing that, that I say governance is so kind of the right word or not, but is working together to make sure all the content comes together in a way that makes sense to the outside world. Um, and our hope is, you know, it's not just us paying for the development of that training materials, that, you know, there's downstream consumers of that material who can deliver training, um, uh, who then turn around and help us build indie training materials or Vero training materials, that sort of thing, um, uh, or improve the uh, sawtooth and fabric training, that sort of thing. So, uh, but put put the funding, it's not really governance over how we spend that money. Um, it's governance over, well, no matter where those resources come together, how what's the best way to unify them? So it's really, I think one thing you touched on there, it's really, as a working group, it's not, I mean, there'd be like a working group that defines what the training material should cover kind of thing, and there's actual individual projects to go do training material, right? Um, it's it it can't, it's the working group. I don't know. I, I mean, I'd kind of leave it up to the working group to 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 set a little bit of how much how much governance do they want to perform versus how let's say fair are they about how you know each of the different chapters come together. I'd say good training modules, good training materials don't go on indefinitely and don't grow without bound. They do actually say, okay, here's a unit called Intro to Sawtooth. And it's 20 hours long of content with some questions and answers at the end. And and it and if there's a you know advanced materials, then that forms a second unit, right? Um, but I, and it could be that the this working group says, okay, we here's the kind of comprehensiveness we want. Here's how broad and then how deep. But ultimately, it's the volunteer resources that show up uh, who kind of you know actually provide the meat, <laughs> the substance for for what goes up. Yeah, and I would say that if we have uh, intro to sawtooth, then you know we should also have intro to fabric, intro to burrow, intro to indi, intro to iroha, right? Um, that it should be consistent across all our projects, so that we're, you know, focusing in on making sure that 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 anybody could start wherever they want and and have the same level of access, right? Um, and maybe you know it's going to take a while to get somebody who can do intro to foobar right um and 
you know, at that point when somebody shows up and says, you know, I really want to learn about Qatar, um, that's when that material starts to get printed. So I, th I think I see, and, and Nathan's comment in the chat just now sort of reflects, you know, what I think I heard from, from Dan and, and, and that is, you know, so there, and others, I don't want to exclude anybody, but um, uh, this notion that the working group is sort of coordinating education and training materials across the project landscape, uh, helping to drive consistency, conformity, um, and, um, and, and, you know, helping to provide uh, guidance and so forth. Um, that there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, shall we say, uh, sort of generic, you know, what's a blockchain, and maybe that can be the purview of a project that is formed that other people can join, that the working group itself would sort of, uh, I think, initially establish, but that's a project. And that the working group, you know, to Nathan's point, is responsible for sort of creating the, what is it, what does it look like, how is it, you know, presented, and so forth. And that it's, you know, like Dan suggested, that it's actually a project or a sub-project that's off developing and collaborating on building the actual material itself. Um, and, you know, like a project, you know, it goes through an incubation period, maybe to an active status, and, uh, and then gets to a point where it's 1.0 and it can be published and so forth. Um, and that that kind of a natural thing, I think, helped, it be, you know, tends to fit in with, you know, some of the other things we were doing. Um, and again, it, it sort of puts this in the, you know, if, if there's going to be training material for Sawtooth, I'm sure Dan and Nick and, and Sean and the others would like to have a certain amount of say and when they think it's correct and done. Um, and that I think naturally falls if it's a, it's a, if it's a product of the, of the, the project that, that seems to, to me to be the best way of articulating this. And that, you know, the others, if you, if there's a generic, you know, blockchain 101, that there's a project for education blockchain 101 and it goes through the same life cycle as every other um, people contributed to it just like every other. Is it, does that, am I making sense? Yeah, exactly. I, I, and I, it's funny, like uh, all of this is stuff that, you know, you'll see in the flesh. <laughs> um, uh, and some of you who have been working with Robert have seen drafts of this and, and we, you know, there's no reason for us not to get it out pretty soon. Um, October 25th is when we said we'd put it up on edX, but uh, um, it'll be available sooner. And it does flesh out all these kinds of, uh, uh, you know, kind of cross, cross project kinds of things. I think the, the, and I do think these end up being work products of the um, training working group in the same way that white papers are a work product of the architecture working group in the same way that um, you have other, other work products. And then I would leave it up to, frankly, the training working group to decide, do they want to content manage training materials that are project specific by having that management happen in a repo that is close to and owned by the fabric maintainers, for example, or close to and owned under the, the training working group? I don't know that we need to dictate it ahead of time, but uh, I can understand why you might want to clarify that. Um, but I, I, I tend to be late binding on a lot of these kinds of governance questions. Lacey binding. Pippin, did you have something to say? I said lazy binding, which is actually a good thing. Oh. <laughs> So where are we? Do we need, uh, are, are people comfortable with the charter as written or does it need additional clarification based on our conversation here today? I'm sort of thinking that, uh, you know, the latter. Uh, yeah, I think this is still a, a, a new concept. Maybe we digest it for, for this week. Uh, and I think we still have some other agenda items to hit today. Yeah.
Nick or no? Nathan? I agree with that. I think, you know, there, there's still, I think, you know, the discussion was helpful for me. I think it clarifies a little bit what the intent is. I still have a concern with the fact that I see an inherent conflict or, or you know, for resources, there's going to be some form of competition of, you know, uh, between the projects themselves that are all trying to put more effort into developing better documentation and training material, right? And this group. But if we can afford to do it, I have no problem with it. And, and from my side, um, I, I'm, I think this is a, a great thing that we should be initiating. Um, it's still not obvious to me kind of what the um, what the primary objective of the group would be, um, and that and and to a degree I'm comfortable with that because I think they're going to figure it out. Um, but but spending a little more time thinking about it, I think would be a good thing. So on my side, I think I like the idea that there's a forum for this kind of collaboration. I think the projects will have a lot to learn from each other in terms of what materials are effective. And having a place for those discussions to occur makes a lot of sense. I think in some ways we've struggled with some of these kinds of documents in the white paper and architecture working groups because it wasn't necessarily the right audience to be developing the material. Um, so this seems like a benefit in that respect. Um, but I think the, the question is just kind of who's going to participate with what time and resources. And, you know, we can't really see what that will look like until we try it. Yes. Thanks, Nathan. Jonathan? He's either on mute or stepped away for a moment. Uh, Hart, any? Yeah, I mean, I, I think having a training group definitely makes sense. Um, I think there's some, we need to kind of figure out, as some people have pointed out, uh, kind of what is the responsibility of the projects and what is the responsibility of the working group and how to kind of make sure that the projects and the working group kind of work together. Um, to, to sort of maximize the materials and avoid duplication. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great idea in the long run. Okay. All right, so I think we have a little bit more work to do, Tracy, on the proposal and a little bit more discussion on the mailing list. Um, we got 20 minutes left, so um, I think, uh, again, we're not gonna do the chain code designer today, but I think we should try to wrap up on Hyperledger Quilt. So, uh, Adrian, I saw you on earlier. Yep, you're still here. Um, uh, I, I think we, you know, the, 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 the discussion on Quilt had sort of, uh, you know, come to a certain amount of closure. So um, why don't we just open it up for any remaining uh, concerns about the proposal? Um, I don't think we need to, you know, go through it again necessarily. We've, we've already done that a couple of times, but um, are, were there any outstanding concerns that people had with the quilt proposal? When I reviewed like still the, some edits. Yeah, when I reviewed the draft earlier, I made some suggestions, but it's really worth me thing. I think the the draft is pretty much there. So. Okay, I'm um, so I'm not hearing any. So I think Todd, we should put it up for a vote. All right, sounds good. Uh, walking through the list quickly. Arno. Yes. Uh, Bao Hua. Um, let Let's give it a try. Yes. Okay. Chris. Uh, yes. Dan. Yes. Hart. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Kelly? Yes. Mick? Yes. Nathan? Yes. All right, that passes unanimously. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, and then uh, just as a reminder then, um, uh, we have the project reporting that we unanimously approved by email. Oh, congratulations, uh, Adrian, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> 
Um, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming from here, I'm going to pick up with Martha on the logistics and specifics of uh, <laughs> what Isaac and I need to do in terms of moving code across and so on. Yeah, in, in terms of moving code, basically um, in, in Rocket Chat, reach out to either Rai Jones or um, Jessica. Um, last name. Uh, Jessica Wagontail, either one of those two should be able to help you uh, get a, uh, um, a repository created so that you can pour the code in. Um, okay. Just to oh. add there, they're really friendly on Rocket Chat. Um, if you join the CI pipeline channel for build issues or the JIRA channel for JIRA or ticket issues, they're always very responsive. Okay, cool. So, so I'm not familiar with Rocket Chat. We've been using Gitter um, on the project a lot and we use Slack internally. So I'll, I'll just have to get myself signed up there and, and uh, figure that all out. Hey, Adrian, this is Tracy Kurt. Uh, so I'm the community architect for Hyperledger. I will um, reach out to you with kind of details about where Rocket Chat is and um, kind of talk to you about mailing list and things like that and how we want to uh, deal with that. So um, I'll send you an email. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, uh, okay, thank you. So um, project reporting, um, Tracy put together a schedule and she conveniently put fabric first. <laughs> so I think I get stuck with uh, the first the first go. Um, uh, I don't know, was somebody kind of linked the, uh, the schedule in there. Um, and uh, so I'll put that together and then I'll take uh, lumps first. Um, and we'll uh, we'll get that that process rolling, and and I suspect that uh, you know as we as we get the reports out, we can discuss whether they're and uh, you know is the right information. I, I think you know I think as as we do the first few, we'll we'll sort of figure out you know whether we're getting too much information, not enough information, the right information, the wrong information, and so forth. So. But uh, happy to get that up and running. Chris, let me know if you have any challenges with the um, the project reporting template. I've got a um, a ticket in right now to uh, make sure that the template uh, gets used for any new um, new updates that get created on the the page. Um, there, because of the changes, the old ones still exist out there. So I haven't seen an update yet on that ticket to, um, for the new one. So we may have to manually do that the first go around. Oh, so when I create the page, it's going to fill in the temp. I mean, the template will sort of be yep. pre-populated or. Yep. Exactly. Oh. You'll see the, the template there and then you just have to fill in the information. So you won't need to do anything, but like I said, this first time you might need to, um, make the changes that we manually made uh, at, with the review, like uh, on the maintainer okay. diversity. I'll, I'll, make... I'll, I'll ping you when I start filling it in, make Perfect. sure I one. Yeah, Thanks for sounds that. good. Thanks. <clears throat> Any other topics for today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trip to the bar. <laughs> okay. Then uh, I'll give everybody a few minutes back. Um, enjoy your, your weekend, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks. 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 Th